After seeing the price of belt grinders, I decided I could build one on my own much cheaper than buying one. Now for me, working with wood is still a good bit easier than working with steel, so I opted to build the frame mostly out of wood. Uh, most of the parts have been acquired from eBay, Amazon, or my local hardware store. I'll post the parts list and dimension drawings on my website in a couple of days. Now here I'm getting ready to mark the opening for my motor. Now the size of the opening will vary depending upon the motor used. Um, I ended up making the opening about a half an inch taller than the motor was. And I'm adding a couple of screws to hold the uh, layers of plywood together while I cut out the motor's opening. And this bandsaw blade has seen better days and it was really struggling to get through the five layers of uh, plywood. And here we hit one of those screws that I had used to hold the plywood together. I ended up having to finish cutting out the hole with a reciprocating saw. It wasn't pretty, but it does work. And here I'm cutting out the top on the two outside panels. Cutting out some strips that will be used to uh, make the uh, dividers on the inside of the uh, frame. I'm going to do a dry fit here to make sure everything goes together as planned and to uh, mark up where the interior dividers will go. These are the floating spacers that fit inside the uh, slide holes that the attachments ride in and they help hold the attachments in place. Alright, I'm going to be using these prong T-nut inserts. So I'm going to drill it out with this Forstner bit. And it's one and a sixteenth inches. You'll have to adjust it for whatever your uh, pronged T-nut is. Alright, now we're going to drill this out 7 sixteenths of an inch to fit the outer diameter of the T-nut here. I'm drilling the holes that the upper arm mounts on. I've clamped both the left and right sides together before drilling to help with alignment. These are the floating spacers that go in the attachment arm holes. They were about an eighth of an inch too thick, so I'm ripping off just a bit to make them fit correctly. I'm drilling the pass-through holes for the bolts that will screw into the T-nuts mounted in the floating spacers uh, which hold the attachment arms in place. Now this is two pieces of plywood that are getting glued and screwed together. They form the topmost part of the uh, attachment arm mounting hole. I'm 
of those pieces are then uh, glued and screwed to one of the outside layers of the frame. And I'm getting ready to uh, start using some of the small strips to form the internal structure that uh, makes the attachment arm mounting holes. And here you can see the two floating spacers in the slots where the attachment arms fit. Here I'm gluing in the lower layers that form the base of the frame. If you notice, they don't go all the way to the back. Now this was done to save material since I didn't quite have enough leftover plywood. And I'm getting ready to attach the opposite outside layer here. Now I'm marking where the inside horizontal pieces are, that way I know where to uh, drill and countersink the uh, screw holes. It looks like Jethro decided to come and see what all the noise in the garage was about. Uh, he didn't stay long. And make sure everything is square and properly aligned before you uh, clamp it and start adding screws in. Just doing a quick test fit of the attachment arm. Now these 3 8 bolts are screwing into the T-nuts in the floating spacers and they lock in the attachment arm so that it can't move. Notice there's a second attachment arm hole just below the main one. Uh, this is so you can mount a tool rest or a work rest. After doing a quick test fit of the upper arm, I'm drilling out the half inch bolt holes which the upper arm will uh, pivot on.
And I just realized I made a huge mistake. This idler wheel is not supposed to have a hole drilled through this piece of steel. There's supposed to be a hinge here that this idler wheel attaches to out here and the idler wheel can be moved up and down like so. This will get welded on, this hinge will get welded on top here and then uh, be a bolt back here with a nut welded in place and as you turn the bolt it will push that hinge out and adjust the angle of this wheel. Drilling a half inch hole for the bolt that will be used to mount the idler wheel. And just so we're clear here, I don't claim to be a welder. And I'm welding in the bolt that the uh, idler wheel attaches to. I was originally going to use a spring to tension the uh, belt, so I welded on this ring. I later abandoned the spring and instead used a gas strut. The machine washer is much smaller and prevents the uh, outer rim here of the wheel from uh, dragging. Here you can see how the tracking works. The bolt is screwed through the nut and the upper arm and contacts with the hinge. As the bolt is screwed in and out, it changes the angle of the idler wheel and moves the belt left or right. And I'm getting ready to start working on the base and uh, final assembly. I'm marking on the base where the upright part of the frame will attach. The base is made up of two layers of three quarter inch plywood. The motor is mounted only to the top layer. I drilled large one and a quarter inch holes in the bottom so I could access the bolts.
This is a one and a half horsepower three phase motor designed for use with a speed controller. I'll have more details on the website. And this is just about where the camera decided to stop recording. I'm not sure why, but it just decided it didn't want to record anymore today. This is the D-plate wheels and platen which I purchased off eBay. I also purchased the inch and a half by 24 inch long aluminum bar, which is the attachment arm uh, off of eBay. This is a temporary work rest that I threw together after the grinder was completed. Uh, it's mounted to the lower accessory attachment arm. I used a speed controller from KB Electronics to make sure it had sufficient airflow over the heat sink. I mounted it on this elevated angled platform. Uh, here all the major parts are attached. I just need to do the wiring, some final cleanup and painting. Uh, here you can see the green bungee cord that I used as a temporary uh, belt tensioner. And here the wiring has been completed. And here is the fully completed belt grinder. And this is the first test run. Uh, if I remember right, I've got it set at about uh, 40 or 50 percent speed right now. Now uh, here you can see the tracking mechanism in action, and it doesn't take too much to move the belt uh, a good bit left or right. Uh, going from 50 percent up to full speed, uh, which is around 4,500 feet per minute. So then I disassembled everything and painted it this wonderful shade of blue. Now I modified the design to use this 25 pound uh, gas spring. The gas spring is mounted to the top arm using two 4 millimeter machine screws. And this is the completed belt grinder. And thank you for watching. If you like my videos, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel.